great to be with you again. Thank you for joining us on This Week in the Valley. Our show features people who are making a difference and events taking place all over the area. I'm Donna Bell. And I'm Darren Elizaris. We have another exciting show for you. Joining us a bit later are Melissa Eskew and Raquel Rickey with Safe Passage, Vietnam veteran Sergeant William Hoke, who received a gift that will change his life, and Jim Simon, Sheridan Valley's general manager, receives a final farewell. It's the first full week of April, and many of us enjoy the thoughts of getting outside more. Planting flowers, starting on your garden, playing in the yard with the kids, taking long walks, and spending time at the ball field. And if you have a youngster playing softball or baseball, a lot of time at the ball field. We've all seen it where some parents in the stands get a little out of hand at their kids' ball game. People have been hurt, lawsuits have been filed, it's crazy. So we have some Little League survival tips for those with kids in ball this spring, and really this applies to any sport. Think long term. With practices and regular season games, you're going to be sitting on the bleachers for quite a few hours. Do you really want to spend all that time feeling uncomfortable because you chose to say something while you were upset in the moment? Before you decide to mix it up with the coaches, the other parents, or the umpire, make sure it's worth it because you're going to be spending a whole lot of time together in very close proximity. Be open to change. So your kid didn't get on the team with all his or her friends from school. Instead of this being a downer, think of it as a great opportunity for you. We all know this gives your child a chance to make new friends and it also opens up your social, social circle. Be nice to the coach. If you're one of those moms that always thinks her kid gets the worst coach ever, be proactive and sign up to be a coach or an assistant coach. If you can't do that, then try to keep your criticisms to yourself or at least temper them with some positive thoughts. The worst team may be the best team. Don't be upset because your kid, in your opinion, is on the worst team. Get over it and celebrate. There are a lot of pluses about being on the bad team. If your kid is halfway decent, he or she will get loads of playing time and learn a whole bunch of valuable lessons that only losing can teach you. Pack up your seat cushions and umbrellas, sunscreen and water bottles, and remember, it's all for the kids, sports are fun, so let's play ball. April is also Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Sexual assault is a complex topic. By validating survivors' experiences as sexual assault, that is, that what happened to them was unquestionably wrong, illegal, and not their fault, increases the chances they will treat themselves and seek help rather than feeling anger, guilt, shame, and confusion. Melissa Eskew, sexual assault advocate, and Raquel Rickey, legal advocate with Safe Passage Domestic Violence and Crisis Intervention Center, joins us next with more on this important issue. Safe Passage is an agency that provides services to individuals and families of domestic and sexual abuse. And I'm so pleased to have mm -hmm. Raquel and Melissa join us. Mm -hmm. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now you've been on several times, but this is Raquel's first <laughs> time is. on yeah. CBTV. So, mm -hmm. um, and you're not new to Safe Passage, but you've been there for like five years or so, and, but you've got a new position. Let's tell us a little bit about what, about what you do. Yes, I've been at Safe Passage for over five years, but just this is the first time that I took over the legal advocate position, and I'm there to help people uh, fill out ex partes, go to court with them, things like that. So. You walk them through to help with those, those situations. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Safe Passage. Well, we are a shelter. We're located in Moberly, Missouri. Uh, we help people who are um, survivors of domestic and sexual violence, as you said. Um, we have a total of a nine county service area and we help people with both residential and non-residential services. Um, we can house women and children and our non-residential services are open to all survivors, including men. So. And those would be things like food baskets, um, assistance with clothing and toiletries, uh, uh, legal and medical advocacy, uh, support groups for both adults and children, and um, all of those services are provided absolutely free. So, so you're very helpful in a time of need for, for many people. Mm -hmm. Or even just an ear to listen. I mean, we have a 24-hour hotline. If um, anyone needs to call, they are welcome to do so. Well, very good. Mm -hmm. well, I know you provide a lot of services, and this month in particular, we're talking about sexual um, assault awareness. So, yes. Melissa, let's talk a little bit about that. Some what's going on in in the area? What's some of the statistics? Okay. And well, yeah. Um, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and um, statistically, um, one in five women and one in thirty-three men will experience either an attempted or a completed rape within their lifetime. 
Um, That's an and amazing so statistic. It is. Yeah. And so more than likely, all of us know someone who's been affected by that, you know. Um, and also, just to give sort of a snapshot of Missouri, um, in 2015, the Missouri Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, they did a survey. It was a census, actually. Um, they worked with um, the programs in Missouri that uh, provide services to sexual violence victims. And out of all of those programs, 94% of the program participated in that. Um, what they found out was during that week's time, um, 890 victims of sexual violence had received services during that week's time. Um, and looking at 890 victims, that may look, um, I don't know, look big, or, but what happens is usually 68% of all sexual assaults um, are never reported. So that 890 is really a low number, you know. Um, and so that just gives a small snapshot of what Missouri is looking at statistically, you know. Um, and so sexual violence, um, sexual violence is any unwanted sexual contact. Um, it can be words or actions, um, anything that is against a person's will or without their consent is sexual violence. Mm -hmm. Um, and it affects people of all ages, genders, incomes, professions. It can happen to anyone. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I just want to talk maybe a little bit about some of the impacts that um, sexual um, violence survivors, you know, what they feel. Um, Short-term effects can be just shame and guilt, uh, a lot of fear, a lot of isolation. Um, they can feel emotionally numb, you know, if that's happened to them. Um, long term, we have a lot that suffer with PTSD. Um, they'll have depression and anxiety. Um, and a lot of eating disorders also with that. So there's a lot of, a lot of effects that sexual violence um, has on a person. Mm -hmm. So it's important for them to get help, and it's important it for... It, you know, this month brings it out that, you know, there, like you said, there's a lot of, a lot that are reported, but there are even more so that may not be reported right. mm -hmm. because right. of the guilt and the shame yes. that they may be experiencing. Yes. So mm -hmm. and it's you know, important. There's a lot of um, victim blaming that still goes on within society as mm -hmm. a whole. And that means know? it's your fault because you right. did something. Well, I shouldn't have been there or I shouldn't have been wearing that, mm -hmm. you know, or why was she wearing that type of victim blaming that mm -hmm. we really need to start holding the perpetrator accountable and not the victim mm -hmm. you know um, a lot of the physical impacts you know there's a lot of injuries during sexual violence um, and concerns about pregnancy and STDs that kind of thing so along with that you get a lot of expense you know within the community you get medical mm -hmm. expenses that you know are out there um, and also, you know, they may be, have to take time off work, you know, if they've been through that. Um, they may have to take some time off work. So there's a lot of different impacts that the survivor goes through, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and also not only the survivor, but their loved ones also go through a lot of the same emotions that they go through. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll have a lot of guilt and fear you know, and why, why, why didn't I, why wasn't I there to help them? You know, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, and then also with, then within our communities, you know, when a sexual assault happens, a lot of times there is fear within the community, mm -hmm. you know, it affects them that way, mm -hmm. or just disbelief that that would happen within their community, but it does happen. It happens in every community. Um, so there are just a lot of aspects to sexual violence that maybe some people don't always think about, but it does affect all of us in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so 2016, April, Sexual Assault Awareness Month is, the theme for that is um, prevention is possible. 
So we're wanting to do some prevention things, you know, here in April. A uh, safe passage is you've got several great things. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> um, so one of the things is we are um, having a women's self defense class, which is mm -hmm. April tenth, mm -hmm. and um, that's from five to seven at night um, in the evening, and uh, that's in Moberly at the martial arts, Moberly Martial Arts, and they can call Safe Passage and get the details on that. Who is putting that on? Is that is Moberly Martial Arts is is mm -hmm. helping us with that. That's so great. Yeah. it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's oh, going to yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's free to the public. Free. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have um, Mike Night, which is going to be held at Vertigo Nightclub in Moberly. Oh, Mike Night. Mike Night. Yeah, and so where you can come and you know sing and. <laughs> yeah. Have you got so, your songs picked out? Oh yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, nobody wants to hear yeah. that. Not for me, anyway. Yeah. But, um, so, we're trying to do some things for prevention. And I've also got, um, around the community in Macon County and Howard County, Sheraton County and Randolph County, I have um, baskets made up with pins and brochures around in different businesses just to put the word out there that this is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the prevention... Um, that we can do personally um, is, you know, when we see disrespectful behavior going on, um, someone um, just acting disrespectful, you know, we can say something about that. We can do that on a personal level. Um, also, we can just promote healthy attitudes, whether it's in our workplace, um, just within friends, you know, just promoting healthy attitudes and knowing mm -hmm. what healthy relationship is and what unhealthy relationship is. Um, a lot of people think that sexual violence is about sex and it has nothing to do with sex. It's about power and control, just as domestic violence is about power and control. Um, the person is wanting to have that control over you, you know. Um, a lot of people think it's about sex when it's not. Um, so there's just many ways that we can prevent um, sexual violence within our communities. Another mm -hmm. way just within our um, businesses is just to promote um, policies that uh, strengthen to help the survivors if mm -hmm. something like that happens. We have survivors who, um, you know, after that has happened, they're bruised up and they don't want to go back to work for a couple weeks until they can heal. Um, don't want to have to explain what has happened. And so they might have to take off work for a few weeks, you know. And so just having policies in place that would help a victim if that is to happen, mm -hmm. you know, is really important. So those are just some of the ways that we can prevent um, sexual assaults or at least help them when they do happen. Absolutely. Know? Well, it's great to have this month because it gives you, a, you know, even though it's sometimes hard to talk about mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. subject, to talk about things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you just de described at work and things that, that you know, some. Yeah. And at Safe Passage there, I mean, anyone is welcome, like she said earlier, mm -hmm. to call. Whether they've been in a situation or they know somebody that's in a situation, mm -hmm. they can call us and we can talk to them about it, maybe give them ideas on how to best support their friend, you know, that's been through that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just one of the things that, you know, that they can do. Then let's talk a little bit about your role as sexual advocate, okay. assault advocate. Yeah, so um, being the sexual assault advocate, what I do is if somebody has been sexually assaulted, um, you're able, and, and you would like to go to the hospital um, and get it, an exam done, you're able to have an advocate with you right there and so they can call us and I will meet them at the hospital and I will sit there and I'm just for them and I'll sit there with them, maybe explain what's going to happen um, and just be there for their support. Um, and whether they choose to press charges or not press charges, that's totally up to them. But if they do choose to, I can be there with them during the interview, I can be with them through the court process all the way through to the end. 
And so I'm just there as their support. I think that would be so. very comforting to know, especially mm -hmm. being in that situation, being mm -hmm. to have somebody that knows what's going on to help right. help you through. I think that I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's it's a wonderful position. I, I enjoy as much as it's not. You know, I wish there wasn't that out there. You know, it is. And being a survivor myself, I understand what they go through. And so I can be there for them the whole way through. Mm -hmm. So they just give us a call and um, we can get somebody to them. So well, it's, it's, this is a, a great month and, and it's good to get the, the word out. And mm -hmm. um, it's, what you do is a, very important. It's, it's, um, I'm mm -hmm. sure it's not easy, but I'm sure it's mm -hmm. very appreciated. So. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is there anything else that we need to talk about for the month or safe passage? Um, no. Just okay. give us a call if any of these services sound like something that you might need and or uh, any of our events that you want to mm -hmm. go to, you can give us a call and uh, we can let you know more about those. Yep. They're going to be a lot of fun. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both very much. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the thank services you. that you provide. I know safe passage is a... a a wonderful place it, and this is not the only thing I mean you guys do so many things mm -hmm. at Safe Passage so mm -hmm. it's it's great so we appreciate well, you being you. here thank, thank you. you and um, look forward to having you again sometime soon and thank I you. hope mm -hmm. those events are successful they sound like so much fun thanks yeah, yeah. thank you you're welcome <laughs> thanks again Melissa and Raquel it's important to speak out about abuse stand up for yourself for others you know that may be in a harmful relationship no matter how hard it is, talk about it. Safe Passage is there to help and offers services that are confidential and free. Retired Sergeant William Hoke, one of our fallen heroes that had both legs blown off in Vietnam, humbly accepts a gift that will change his life. The presentation was held right outside Dr. Thurman's chiropractic rehab clinic in Macon with Bill's wife, Velda, and close friends, and CVTV was there. Maybe he can go catch some crappie now. Yeah, he'll be out there. He'll be able to do some things now. He's take, got tracks on it. He takes his lawnmower in him every once in a while, so man. My <laughs> It'll that. be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please keep it. Well, I'm here with Katie West, and Katie, you were kind of uh, the spearhead of, of getting this getting this to happen. Were you excited when it arrived? I was so excited. I can't wait to give it to him. All right. So what... What was the procedure like to get this wonderful machine for this man? Well, Dr. Thurman asked me to look into the internet to find a place that would donate one. And so I found the Independence Fund and I had to fill out some paperwork and sent in some information to them and they approved it. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's going to get to do some fishing this spring, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> when when did the chair arrive? We got it on Friday and I had to charge it, so we got to try it out on Monday and it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, you, you took it for a little spin, huh? I did and I had to get it in the building, so I had to climb a pretty good incline and I thought I was going to fall out of the chair, but it was fun. <laughs> it, it, it makes it there. Yes, it will. It'll go pretty much anywhere. It's not purple. It's not purple. <laughs> I didn't know we were supposed to get it in purple. <laughs> well, he said he wanted a pink one, and I just didn't think that looked yeah. very good <laughs> against his skin oh, color. What a Here's the throw here. How can I help you? You can. Okay. He knows just how to do it. I told you he'd figure out how to get in there. All I need is a machine gun, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> There's a seat belt on it, too. <laughs> I want to put a seat belt on here. Hey, Bill. Do you think that's going to make it to the fishing pond? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you look like you're looking for the rough terrain. 
I am. <laughs> Think it'll go over this one? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ride it, Bill, ride it. <laughs> Hold on. Come on in here. Come on, sir. Get up here. You want by your wife? This was kind of fun today, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was great. It was real delightful to do this. Um, and like I said, Katie is the one that has put all this together with the Independence Fund for Bill. Um, and we just wanted to get him some to be more independent. Um, he is a true hero. Like I said, he had both legs blown off in Vietnam. And so his whole adult life, he hasn't had legs. Uh, the Veterans Administration had some legs for him, and then they changed the models, and he never did acclimate to them. And so for, I don't know, probably 20 years, he hasn't been able to go where he wants to go. Now, you've been treating Bill for how, how long? Uh, 10, 12 years. Quite a while, so you've had a bit of a relationship with him. Yes, you have a good relationship with him. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of this, I think you had mentioned uh, his, uh, with, time and and wear on wear and tear on his his uh, arms and such this was right. this became really a necessity well he has not had a uh, automatic wheelchair he's from the old school and so he's one of these proud guys very humble um, and of course he wants to use his arms and as I don't know I think they said he was 76 years old well, his arms and his shoulders are wearing out. And so this is going to help him tremendously. We've treated him chiropractically, and we've treated him. We've, doing, we've done injections. But uh, this is going to help him tremendously so he can go out and go, he can go fishing. He can go turkey hunting. Now, this guy is a guy that in, three years ago, he actually tinned his own roof. <laughs> I mean, you, can you imagine pulling the tin up on the ladder with no legs and doing this and accomplishing this? And, and it just, it's an, it's an inspiration for people that here's a guy that has no legs, he can tend his own roof and he, can, he just is always busy doing stuff. And, and this is just gonna allow him to do so much more. So we just wanted to show our appreciation to our veterans and one of his buddies here is Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor has shrapnel and has uh, uh, bullets in him from Vietnam as well. And some of these Vietnam vets have been forgotten and uh, as I stated, they're good friends. They go hunt together and everything. Um, but now he can go without with Tom, and he doesn't feel like he's a burden. I mean, he can, as you saw him out in the grass, he's cutting around and doing it. He wants to get things muddy. You know, he's typical. He's like a little kid. Yeah. So um, we just want to do our part. And, again, Katie did all of this. Katie, you know, she took it and she did it, and she followed through and followed up on it. And so I can't thank her enough. And also... They got the trailer for him as well, and I went down and got the trailer yesterday, and Lowe's gave us a discount on the trailer, but the Independence Fund paid for the trailer, paid for the chair, everything. So this is a very worthwhile, and they're first class. And what I mean about that is they gave him a gun rack, a cup holder, a phone holder. Um, uh, oh, so we don't hardly even see all the accessories. Right. That go. All the accessories are over here. I brought them out here. Uh, but we didn't want to put all these on because I didn't know what he wanted. Right. You know, um, But this way, I have, I have treated him after he has gone to, the, uh, gone to the pond and fallen out of his wheelchair, you know, fallen backwards or whatever. This thing, you can't hardly really tip it over. You know, So it, it, it is so versatile that he can just go do almost whatever. Uh, he can go anywhere he wants to. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, and thanks for your efforts, too. Thank you. So, Bill, how'd you like that first test drive? It was awesome. <laughs> I'll have to try some more of them before the day's out. Yeah, what, what's the first thing you're going to do with it when you get home? Get it muddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. That, I've heard about that uh, fishing pond you got in, by the house. Yeah, I stay in it a lot with the lawnmower. I can't go down there with this one, though. You can't? No, that was strictly forbidden. <laughs> Who told you that? The boss lady. <laughs> oh, the boss lady, I see. She's always out there pulling me out of the other one. I see. Hey, you know what I was thinking? What if you and I went on a turkey hunt this spring and filmed it? Thomas? He's got, he's got, the, he's got the place to hunt. Oh, he's got the place to hunt, huh? Yeah. 
Well, very good. Well, you enjoy this thing. I will. And thank you for your service. Thank you. A long time friend with Bill. Yeah, we were. We worked together first in 1982 in a saddle shop in western Colorado. Mm. And uh, then we've been friends ever since. So, uh -huh. yeah. well, very good. Well, you're, you're, he's gonna, you're gonna be busy, him dragging you around, isn't he, out in the woods and such. You just turn him loose and he'll go. Yeah. Make sure he's got his phone so if he gets stuck, he can call me. All right, so. all right, yeah. very good. Well, thank yeah. you much. You're welcome. And thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Do you think that's going to make it to the fishing pond? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah.